Excellent! Hello everyone and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is... It's an unboxing. I feel bad. I feel conflicted. I was actually completely unsure whether or not I should even go ahead and do this video because unboxings, as you guys probably are already aware of, kind of suck. I mean, there's really not a whole lot that you gain from them. It's, you can watch me take some stuff out of a box and really, what it's gonna lead to is just AMD getting some free publicity for their new lineup of AMD APUs that are coming out for the AM4 sockets uh, that are gonna be compatible with the 300 series and 400 series motherboards. So when I first heard that there was going to be an unboxing embargo for these APUs that's separate from the actual embargo lift, which is on Monday, uh, when we can actually give reviews and performance metrics and that kind of thing, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna fall for it this time. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. But I didn't wanna just make that decision and wash my hands of it without at least running it by you guys. So I reached out on Twitter, sent this tweet, and uh, I am a little concerned about the 42% of you who are no longer feeling feelings anymore, but 2017 was a tough year, um, but it does appear that only 14% of you actually believe that unboxings are lame and pointless. So we've all been misled by Gamers Nexus, and with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the box. Just arrived a day or two ago, and uh, I don't know what else to say about it. There was a packing list on the outside that I already looked at, so I have a vague idea of what is actually in here. I'm not expecting quite the same level of presentation and, and stuff that they did with Threadripper or uh, the earlier Ryzen launches from 2017. Um, ah. And there it is. So we have a large Ryzen retailish looking package, I guess. It's another uh, reason why I guess some people are interested in these types of unboxing videos is not everyone gets to see this type of packaging. So you guys get to see uh, what AMD directly sends out to reviewers uh, in order to review products. And this one does specifically say for reviewing and testing purposes only, not for resale. So I guess I can't flip this after I'm done and make a profit. On top we have uh, just an insert talking about the actual two products in here. We've got the Ryzen 5 2400G, which is gonna be the higher end. Uh, it's actually kind of a replacement for the, uh, the 1400. And then we've got the 2200G, uh, which also includes Vega graphics, not quite as powerful. Uh, you got eight uh, GPU cores, or GPU compute units as AMD calls them, versus 11 GPU compute units in uh, the Vega units on the 2400G. But I think this is gonna be a really nice uh, option for anyone who's struggling with horrendously overpriced graphics cards right now, especially if you're looking to build a budget system, because budget sy even the budget graphics cards are really overpriced. So uh, getting yourself an APU you'll be able to game with, hopefully decently game with, uh, assuming you're gonna be at 1080. Basically just get yourself a computer to game with uh, to tide you over, hopefully for the short period of time until graphics card prices get sane again. It appears to be all that we have in the box. All right, so here is my kit. And uh, basically we've got the two processors. I'll save those to take out of their boxes in just a moment. And then they basically wanna make sure that you're set up with the hardware to get these running functional. And of course, uh, give, a, give a good show of them. So uh, to that end, they've included G-Skill Flare X memory. This memory is really nice if you're pairing it with a Ryzen CPU because Flare X was specifically made by G-Skill to work with uh, the Ryzen, CPU, Ryzen CPUs and work at higher rated speeds. This is the 3200 speed kit, uh, two by eight gigs. Given memory prices right now, I should just trade this for gold or something, I imagine. But um, it is, it's, it's good to have another kit of the Flarex stuff. And um, if you're gonna use, if you're just gonna plug in XMP values and if the Flarex memory isn't grossly overpriced compared to, you know, comparable memory speed and capacity configurations, definitely something I can recommend to get yourself up and running with high speed memory in Ryzen, which is very good for game, uh, for gaming as well as overall performance. Uh, the motherboard they've included is from Gigabyte. This is the AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi uh, Mini ITX motherboard. This is actually the same Mini ITX motherboard that I used in the build I did for Rachel and sent with her over to China. And it is still doing a great job for her over there from what I understand. And I was kind of sad to see my little Mini ITX AM4 board uh, go overseas. So uh, this is a nice little add-on too. M.2 slot on the back there. 
uh, so you can add yourself some high speed storage. And this is a B350 motherboard. Of course, we are expecting um, at least X470 motherboards from AMD uh, coming out in the next month or two. Uh, but we're also probably gonna see a B450 variant or something like, along those lines as well. Though I don't believe that has been officially confirmed yet, but I can't imagine them not doing it. Beyond that though, this is a nice motherboard as far as the feature set, Wi-Fi integrated, so you don't need an expansion slot for that. Full size by 16 expansion slot for your graphics card. Supplemental CPU power connection, so it's got decent power delivery and you can do a bit of overclocking here. Not the best position for that supplemental CPU power connector, but I digress. All right, let's get this put aside. So got the motherboard, got the memory. Uh, this is sealed for security, or so it says. This, uh, the, the packing list said there was a personalized USB stick, but this just appears to be a USB stick. So this probably is gonna have drivers on it and that kind of thing. It's just a four gig stick. It's orange and black and it has an AMD logo on it. And they've included a lanyard because they're very thoughtful that way. And now at last it is time to unbox the processors. I'll start with the three, the Ryzen 3 2200G right here. And I'll break the seal on the top and here voices of angels singing. Uh, it looks like packaging is pretty much the same as uh, what we saw with the Ryzen first generation series. does include a little race fire cooler there, which is very nice to have. Now the CPU itself has a varying TDP. The TDP actually goes from 45 to 65 watts depending on the configuration. Uh, but out of the box, 65 watt TDP, and that can be handled by this Race Spire cooler. So uh, it's good to know that you have everything you need just to get yourself up and running. Also looks like they've put a new AMD sticker on the top of that. Just make things look a little bit cleaner. Uh, thermal paste is pre-applied. And then in this little box, we have our actual APU. 2200G uh, has four CPU cores and four threads. So you get four cores, but you do not have SMT. So four cores, four threads. It's got a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a max boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz. Again, that TDP, which varies from uh, actually 46 watts to 65 watts, but still keeps it down quite a bit, especially when you're considering that it's graphics and CPU in there at the same time. And then they've also included a couple stickers here. And since it's got the graphics, you get your Ryzen 3 sticker, uh, or case badge, and the Radeon graphics logo as well. Beyond that, the CPU is not going to really look all that much different than any other Ryzen CPU for AM4 that we have se already seen, because it's an AM4 CPU, and it slots into AM4 sockets, just like Ryzen CPUs that have already existed. The main difference now is that when you slot this into a motherboard, an AM4 motherboard that has video outs on the back, which uh, most AM4 motherboards do have, but they've been completely useless up to now, unless you use some of the uh, older older APUs that they came out with a few of. Uh, it's nice to be able to get just get video outs directly from there. Now, these CPUs are also going to be using your system memory for the graphics memory. There is no HBM memory that's integrated as part of the CPU as well. So that's another good reason why you might consider uh, some higher end memory or just something that's a little bit faster uh, because this is gonna be using Infinity Fabric to communicate between the CPU and the uh, GPU portion and Ryzen Infinity Fabric ticks at memory speed. So faster speed memory means that everything is gonna get a little boost. And of course, uh, once we're able to do some actual gameplay testing performance on this, we'll give you a bit better idea of what you're actually gonna get from that higher speed memory. And now for the reveal you've all been waiting for, which is going to be completely different than uh, when I unbox the 2200G, the unboxing of the 2400G. All right, I have confirmed that this is going to cost $169 uh, MSRP, and it's effectively going to replace uh, the $170 quad core that exists in the Ryzen 5 lineup right now. Um, they will, will both still be available, and it's difficult to say whether the included Vega graphics in this will affect overclocking or that kind of thing, um, but hopefully we'll do some testing on that and let you guys know. We also get a Wraith Stealth cooler in the box here, same as the uh, 2200G. And the 2400G has 11 uh, GPU compute units as compared to the 2200G's eight GPU compute units. The 2400G has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz, uh, the TDP of 65 watts at, at default, but you can lower that by reducing some of the clock speeds so that the uh, heat output changes. Uh, and then you have 11 GPU cores as compared to the uh, eight uh, GPU cores on the 2200 and of course still using 
Vega architecture. So there's that one. Again, physically, no real difference from any other AM4 processor, apart from the fact that there's a GPU in there and uh, it says 2400G on the top. Uh, you've also got both of your little case badge stickers and there are your two CPUs, APUs, I guess I should say, since these are AMD APUs. Although I haven't heard AMD using the term APU quite as frequently anymore. I don't know if they're they're kicking that to the curb or what, but maybe I can find out for sure and let you guys know if AMD approves of the term APU anymore. Now, if you look at the current AMD Ryzen lineup, uh, the Ryzen 5 1400 and the Ryzen 5 1500X are usually between $150 and $170 or so, and those are both uh, quad-core CPUs with eight threads. So this uh, 2400G coming in at $170 is to some degree going to replace a couple of those CPUs, although they will still be available, so you can still buy either one. And uh, hopefully as some more reviews and testing comes out, we'll be able to give you a better idea of if there's any actual performance difference from this CPU, given that it's got a GPU integrated as well, or if you're not using the GPU, uh, if it's just gonna work the same way. So guys, that has been my quick unboxing of the new Ryzen APUs, the 2200G and the 2400G coming soon, compatible with the AM4 socket and existing B350 uh, and X370 motherboards, as long as you get a BIOS update, as well as upcoming uh, X470 motherboards and hopefully more in the 400 series as well. I will have a review video coming out too once I'm able to divulge that information to you guys. So of course, uh, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already so you can see those videos when they come out. Uh, I don't think I can put links to these either, but I will put a couple links in the video description to some of the other products that came in this package if you guys are interested. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Definitely hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time.